I'm supposed to be using this. I was supposed to be using this the entire time for three since I got out of the hospital. It was one of their requirements that I use a walker, uh, that I have uh, that I have disability bars installed in my house. That I have a special bed. Oh. But I refused. I refused all of that. I refused all of it. I, I, I have the stuff, but I, I refuse to uh, I refuse to use it. Effectively, technically I'm disabled, right? Um, welcome to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. I am still a part of this. Uh, one of my friends launched this company. Uh, he created vitamins and an entire uh, system uh, that uh, is alkaline in nature it uh, it is the upper tier it's not the top tier but it's the upper tier of vitamins all the ingredients are fully organic uh, the, the vegan and all that, all that sort of stuff all of that uh, you can uh, access it and I do get a cut if you ever buy anything <laughs> at uh, shikama dot me power dot me so if you want to help me out uh, you can do that uh, uh, and it is it is uh not the cheap not the cheap uh vitamins and stuff and uh and uh of course they have a green machine powder and all that sort of stuff uh, i'm still getting products to demonstrate to you uh anyway so uh, it's not the cheap stuff it's the real stuff the stuff that i actually help you let me list off some companies that are involved in what I'm about to talk about. And uh, I'm going to ask you to comment below to tell me if you notice anything. Toyota, Honda, Denso, Fanuc, Hitachi, Kawasaki, Mitsubishi, Panasonic, Sony, Toshiba, Yaskawa. Notice anything? And, and more, of course, and more. In fact, they just released a uh, new robot cafe in Japan. This cafe is fully robotic. Uh, the waiters are robots. And the people controlling the robots are all disabled people. So they are gainfully employed. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I uh, left off some of the companies. ABB, KUKA. Staubli. Now, let's take a look at some demographics. Men are more likely than women to be disabled. Women are pampered all their lives, including doors being opened for them so as to save them from exerting themselves. Because of this, women not only live longer, but end up with a much better quality of life at the end of their life. However, their contributions in society are almost non-existent as well because they don't exert themselves and don't need to. Uh, success. I, I have a quote now, uh, so uh, get, your, get your pen and paper out. Success, invention, and genius is 99% work and 1% luck. Now, that's a combination of several different uh, quotations from very famous people but I put it all together let me say it again success invention and genius is 99% work and 1% luck uh, there are two industries that are married robotics and prosthetics guess who the major client for both are men of course right that's right men men create it 
and men end up using it. In my series, Japan Releases Fully Functioning Female Robot, there was uh, a bit of uh, some pushback. And uh, every time that you see a comment that has a lot of pushback to it, invariably the person speaking is a woman or pretends to be a woman or maybe it's a maybe it's a man with a woman name or somebody pretending to be a woman but invariably it is of a female nature i want to uh i want to ask you something what why is it that women would be uh offended or or even care I said Japan releases a fully functioning female robot wife the only people who can have a wife are husbands so uh, then uh, it should not be a concern a, a woman at all in fact I did have some women say hey I hey I, I could use that does dishes, cleans the house, I could use that. But a lot of the people who are uh, doing the pushback are not understanding that there is a very large demographic that needs to be served and this would serve them. And that is, is somebody coming to my house? And that are the disabled men. In fact, I w going over the characteristics and new inventions of the robots, uh, and uh, specifically when I talked about robots that are 10 times stronger than humans, which seems to be a very bad setup to, <laughs> to uh, a movie, uh, some of the disabled people in my uh, channel spoke up and said, hey, no, 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 no. This isn't bad. This is fantastic. That means that I could get around my house without calling somebody, without having to install big, huge uh, transport things through. The... Have you seen that? Have you seen the, you know, they're completely disabled people and they uh, get onto, they have little conveyor monorails throughout their house. And so, you know, so the house is basically useless to anybody else trying to access the house you know it's, it's, it's a very big imposition on people who are able-bodied right so if you want to have nice aesthetics in your house you simply get yourself a nice uh, robot wife uh, and and so and then you have it um, what you also don't take into account is the notion that taxpayers can fund all of the social programs that uh, people want to fund. When you say the state needs to take care of people, you don't understand that some people live on millions of dollars every 10 years, N not because they're wealthy, not because they spend money, but because the equipment, the manpower, and the what have you to keep them alive, to keep them functioning, is extremely expensive. And we're, of course, we're talking about you know healthcare needs and healthcare uses, nurses, doctors, on-call staff, ambulances. All of these people have to be paid, and all of that has to be funded through taxpayer money. And we can see that. In the United States, there are quite a few cities, towns that are just can't do it. So we have these robots that are not available in the United States. Well, they might be they might be here, but all of this is so private, and the robots are so expensive uh, that you, that uh, you don't see it on the news. You don't hear it on the news because there's already been backlash to the actual robots by women's groups who want to uh, make sure and try and legally ban this, which makes no sense. 
they they don't take into account that this could alleviate entire cities of millions of dollars a year millions probably billions in in health funding for something that could be replaced by these robots uh, whether you uh, lease them or buy them you can have these robots for men uh, in, of all stages of all you know whatever right uh, and what a lot of people with with these uh, uh, what, do, what do you call it the um, identity politics ignore is that there are people with disabilities and those disabilities aren't just physical a lot of the disabilities are also emotional uh, uh, the United Kingdom uh, has a, a, a huge geriatric population that is alone. Now they have, you know, registered all, all their geriatrics uh, and uh, they have staff that rotates to, to go around and visit them to make sure that they are uh, healthy and they're okay. And uh, I just saw a documentary about this. And uh, sure enough, there's not enough staff to go around. And then they introduced some robotics into the mix and observed uh, the, ro the robots interacting with the, uh, uh, the, with the uh, senior citizens in their, in their, in their country. Uh, and uh, they were amazed at how quickly the senior, senior citizens acclimated themselves with the robot. Of course, the robot was programmed to talk about stuff that they would be familiar with. Well, you know, uh, dances, music, uh, common stuff that was available uh, 60 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, you know, during the prime of their life. Uh, and so they said, if we could get, you know, maybe a few thousand of these, we could really improve the quality of life for a lot of these people. You, ha you have to understand that uh, being alone impacts humans. As much as humans want to pretend that they're hermits, they're not hermits. Even hermits have animal pets and all that sort of stuff <laughs> even real true hermits right and in, in fact a lot of hermits will say oh i prefer the company of animals but you prefer the company of something other than yourself right you need it you need some sort of companionship and this is where this comes in so uh i want to end this here uh like i said uh i i go outside i I said I uh, I suffer from you know people, when I say stuff people just oh I don't you you just you just you just you're just a full of malarkey I suffer from uh, uh, what is it called fear of going outside of my house yeah and in fact today I had a took a day off from my dog even I uh, fed him this morning uh, and put him in the yard and uh, he's outside all day long. Uh, it's a nice day out for him. <laughs> uh, um, and, and occasionally, even with this, I don't even check my mail. How about them apples? Uh, even with this phobia that I have, uh, I every few months I go out and I intentionally go to my neighbor's house and talk to them for either five minutes or even an hour, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I'm doing good. Uh, anyway, uh, I, Hey, I lost eight pounds, uh, uh, in three days and, uh, I haven't been eating. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good, good thing or not. Uh, um, I, yeah. And I even went and try and bought some, buy some food and I did not eat the food. It's still sitting there. I have zero appetite. Hey, but I'm getting there. And I had a scare with my stomach. And, uh, you know. 
Anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for everything.